Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is the Goodness of God series, and we are on day 17. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day, my Father. The day that you chose for us to live in, my God. The day that you chose from the beginning of time, that we would be alive on this day, that we would breathe and move and have our being in you, my Father. We are alive, my God. We are breathing, my Father. The grace and the beauty of your love, my God. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for our Savior, my God. You are welcome. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. You are welcome in this place. And sadly, you are not welcomed everywhere. But in this place, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In this place, we do what you say. I give thanks with a grateful heart my Father, as we come into your sanctuary and we can only bow down and say that you are wonderful and true, Abba Father. You are awesome, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor. Jesus, may the praises of every nation be heard to you belongs the glory, blessings, and honor. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. Jesus, have it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that today is a great day. Because the one that holds us up will never let us down. Thank you for your leading and for your guidance. You are our rock and our fortress. Thank you for leading and guiding us, my Father, in our families, in our workplace, with our friends. Thank you for leading us and guiding us into the marketplace. Thank you for helping us give the best testimony and the best representation of who you are in our lives. You are the Lord of our life. Thank you. Thank you for your divine connections and divine appointments. Thank you that from the beginning of time, you have chosen people to be good to us, people to bring good, good treasures and not and they sometimes may not bring good things, but everything that comes from heaven is good. For your name's sake, lead us and guide us in your wisdom to make the right decisions in every area of our lives. As we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, we ask ourselves, will this decision glorify God? Or will it glorify me? Every day we take steps we have never taken before. And we learn things we have never known before. And we have opportunities in you, O Lord. May all these opportunities and businesses and land deals and real estate deals and book contracts and every type of opportunity that comes our way, my Father, be to give you the glory and we rebuke and we cancel every satanic assignment over our lives my god every distraction my father that wants to steer us away from your purposes and your plans for our lives my father thank you O oh god Thank you for 
The weapons of our warfare are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, my God. The weapons of our warfare are praise and worship. The weapons of our warfare are the creation and the words and the declarations of our mouth, how we pray scripture back to God, back to you, O oh God. The weapons of our warfare is love and doing good even when evil is done to us. The weapons of our warfare, my Father, You are the weapon of our warfare. You, my God. And Lord God in heaven, I thank you, Father God. Every step we take, may we walk behind you and never in front of you, my Father. Walking behind you is walking in your will and allowing you to lead, my Father. Walking behind you is being in tuned with your times and with your chronos time, my Father, and not with our time, my God. Walking behind you, O oh God, is knowing that you are God and knowing our place as, our, as the creation, as your children, as your church my god walking behind you my father as you lead and we will follow heavenly father as you take us to our victory today and in all eternity in the mighty name of your name jesus christ of nazareth we pray and we give you thanks my father we thank you, my God, for making us into the people that you died for us to be. Help us to be more loving. Help us to be more accepting of other people's faults, my God. Help us to understand that we are not perfect, God. Help us to not judge others, my Father. Help us to not give a bad report of other people, my Father. Help us to speak, my God, in good and in love, my God. And if we don't have anything good to say, may we be quiet in you with a holy sipper on our mouth, my God. My God. That is also the weapon of our warfare, my Father. Doing things contrary to the world, walking in the Spirit, spending time with you so you can fill our love tank, my Father. My God, that our words that come out of our mouth will be filled with love and light and, and life, my God. My Lord God, Thank you, my Father. Thank you for healing us and taking us to a place of wholeness, my Father. Thank you for your shalom peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy, I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. 
Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy. And yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God. Welcome to the Goodness of God series. We are on day 17, and the name of our devotional today is Understanding the Heart of God. Although God's merciful attitude towards the Israelites in the book of Jeremiah is amazing, it is not unusual. Read the entire Bible and you will find he was always this way with his people. Why? Because that is his heart. It's simply the way he is. Over and over again, he would give them his word. Over and over again, they would disobey it and suffer the painful consequences. Yet his heart always longed to do good for them. Repeatedly, he would say things like he did in Deuteronomy 5.29, Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all of my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. God never looked at his people when they were in trouble and said, I'm glad they're hurting. They're just getting what they deserve. No, his heart longed for them, just as our hearts long for our children when we see them being disobedient getting in trouble and suffering harm because of it. He longed for them to obey him because he knew if they would, they would live free and victorious. Repeatedly, he urged them to walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you would prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. What a great God! I have said it before and I will say it again. This is God's heart. He wanted them to live. He wanted things to be well with them. That's the reason he gave us his commands. He wanted to help them and do them good. And you can see that in Isaiah 48, 17 through 18. And it reads, I am the Lord your God, which teaches you to profit, which leads you by the way that you should go. Oh, that you would hear my commandments and you would have peace as a river and righteousness as the waves of the sea. That was God's heart in the Old Testament that he didn't change in the New Testament. For I am the Lord God and I change not, Malachi 3, 6 says. You can hear it coming out through the words of Jesus as he sorrowed over the Jewish leaders' rejections of him as the Messiah. He did not spurn them. He did not say, you stubborn people, you've rejected me and now you're going to get the punishment that you deserve. No, he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killed the prophet and stone them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, 
even as hens gathers her chicken under her wings and you would not matthew 23 37. that's not just how god feels about the jewish nation it's how he feels about all people he loves all of us with that same kind of tenderness and love as john 3 16 says god so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son that who ever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life he could say the same thing to each one of us he said to jerusalem he could say how often would i have met your need and taken care of your children how often would i have given you the desires of your heart but you would not turn to me and listen to me because we didn't know god's heart and understand how good he is there have been times in our life when we felt God didn't care about us. We have or have had unmet needs, so we thought he had neglected us, but it was the other way around. We had neglected him. He was always ready to heal our bodies. He was always ready to supply our needs. If we wanted something good, God always is ready to give it to us. We were just not in position to receive. God loves every person but he is only obligated to the welfare of the person who receives him into his life by believing and obeying his covenant. Jesus is the perfect picture of God. As wonderful as the revelation of God's goodness is in the Old Testament, the best and most perfect revelation of it comes to us in the New Testament through his son Jesus. He is the fulfillment expression of the Father's heart. He is the fulfillment of the Hebrew covenant. Jesus so embodies the character and nature of God that he said to his disciples, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, John 14, 9. And Hebrews 1, 3 says the whole expression of the glory of God, the perfect imprint and every image of God's nature. We know that everything Jesus did while he was on earth was an expression of the will of God because he said, I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things and I always do those things that please him. John 8, 28 and 29. Therefore, if we want to know what God desires to do for us today, all we have to do is look at the ministry of Jesus and see what he did for people when he was on earth. Acts 10.38 sums up his ministry by saying, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In other words, Jesus went about doing good because God is a good God. According to this verse, we can know for sure that it seems good to God for all to be healed. Jesus said, the father that dwells in me does the works. John 14, 10. God the father was involved in every healing and in every deliverance. We can also see the source of sickness. Satan is the oppressor. Read slowly and let what the Amplified Bible or any other Bible translations say into your mind and spirit on Acts 10 38 and it reads how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power how he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil for God was with him it is interesting to me that religious people in Jesus' day were no different from many religious people today. They are constantly upset with Jesus because he did not observe all of their religious traditions. They got mad at him because he healed people on the wrong day of the week. They criticized him when he let his disciples pick grain to eat on the Sabbath because it violated their religious rules. Jesus did care as much 
excuse me, Jesus did not care as much about religious traditions as he cared about people, because that's the way God is. When he saw people that were physically hungry, he didn't turn his back and say, well, they'll be okay. They ought to be fasting more anyway. No, he called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now for the last three days and they have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting, lest, lest they faint in the way, Matthew 15, 32. Then he worked a miracle in order to feed them. It was the Father's will. When people were spiritually hungry, he taught them. When people were sick and they came to him, he healed them. When they asked, he even went to him, to them. Religious tradition might say God doesn't always choose to heal you. Sometimes he will heal you and sometimes he won't. But the life of Jesus contradicts this statement. He healed every person, who every, whoever reached out to him by believing and acting on what he said. Every one of them. Jesus read the following account of his ministry and let that fact sink into your heart. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, those which were possessed by devils and those which were lunatic and those that had palsy, he healed them. Matthew 4, 23, 24. Great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Matthew 12, 15. And whoever entered the village is with him or cities or country. They laid the sick in the streets and besought him and they might touch if it were but the border of his garment and as many as touch him, they were made whole. Mark 6, 56. And a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for they went virtue out of him and healed them all. Luke six seventeen through 19. My friends, at the wedding feast in Cana, Jesus showed us that he would be there when we asked. He would step in to meet even the most seemingly insignificant needs. The host of this wedding had run out of wine, an embarrassing situation for them to be sure, but hardly of great eternal significance Yet when Jesus' mother called on him for help, he abundantly met the need by turning the water not into ordinary wine, but into the most wonderful wine that even the governor in John 2.9 commented that it was the best wine, the most wonderful wine. And that was characteristic of Jesus. He never fails to give the best to those who come to him in faith for help. He has such a good heart. He is willing to help everyone who asks. And yes, you might say that was how Jesus was back then, but does he still do those things with us today? Hebrews 13.8 answers this question simply. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is still an expression of the nature of God the Father. And the Bible says this about him. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James 1.17 
A good gift could be the healing of demons. The good gift could be the healing for your physical body. A good gift is the healing of your spirit. A good gift could be the healing of drugs and alcohol and of depression. A good gift could be the promotion for a better job to feed your family. A good gift could be going from a, an apartment where they're raising your rent and where you have no security and where you don't feel that you are settled and going into a house where Jesus has provide, for provided everything that you needed in order to have a roof over your head for your family. A good gift could be that you have a jalopy car, a car that is breaking down all the time and someone assists you in giving you the credit or even someone at your church might give you a car. That is a good gift as well. A good gift is Jesus, the savior of the world, the one that came to heal us of all of our diseases, the one who came to set us free yesterday, today, and forever. God is a good God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Father, that you have wonderful blessings in store for us. We just have to be in a position to believe, to have faith, to follow, and to be obedient to your word and to receive you, Father. My God, my God, you have always wanted the good for us. You have always wanted the best, my Father. The best, my God, for us to be free, for us to be healed and whole. You've always wanted for us to walk, my God, and to see your glory, my Father, so that we may help others, God, that need the same healing and the same deliverance, my Father. You have always wanted, my God, the revival to exist in one person, not in, the, in a congregation or in a tent meeting of a hundred thousand, but let there be revival in one. And as we are revived in one, we will help to revive others, my Father. You are wonderful. You are truly God. You are truly a God that has a heart, that has a beautiful heart, a tender heart. Yet you are a strong warrior God. You are the you were crucified as a lamb, but you resurrected as a lion, my father. And you are coming again, my father. And you are going to bring the judgment to every nation, God, because you are, Father God, also a God of wrath, my Father. You are a God of justice. And one day the door is going to close. And one day there will be no more opportunities to receive you and to believe in you and to have faith in you because the door of salvation and of heaven will close. My God, my Father, help every man, woman, and children, my God, and child to, my God, help them, my Father to walk and to enter into the path of heaven, into the path of salvation, my Father. Help every man, woman, and child, my God, to find a message like this, to find revelation through a word, through a, a, a Bible teaching, through a pastor, my Father, through a friend, my God. Help every man, woman, and child, my God, seek you and find you, the families of each and every person listening to this message, my Father, that you may save them, God, that you may be patient a little while longer and not leave them out, my God, because you are never going to quit on us, my God, for the prayers of the righteous availeth much and the prayers, my Father, of each and every one of them, of us will be sufficient to, my God, to bring and to, to have our family 
be, my God, justified in front of your eyes so that they may be saved, my God. My Lord God, thank you for listening to this prayer, this line, this Bible devotional, this YouTube channel exists to give you the glory and to proclaim to the world that you are good and to proclaim to the world that your miracles are today. They were then, my God, today and tomorrow because you are the same God yesterday, today and tomorrow. You do not change. You are not a man that you would lie. You do not sleep and you do not slumber. And Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the full representation of who you are through your son, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen.